and welcome back. Today, we're going to be looking at selective pressures. What causes some alleles to be favored and other alleles to be removed from a gene pool? So let's check this out. First things first, recognizing the populations do change over time. That just happens. And as a population changes over time, one of the things we need to look at is how does it change over time? Specifically, it's the allele frequency that actually matters. Some alleles are going to gain in abundance and other alleles are going to vanish. And that is really important. That means that we are going to have a change in the gene pool. It's really, really crucial that you understand what a gene pool is. So the gene pool is all of the alleles that exist in a population. What it means is that you have a group of organisms that all are going to be interbreeding. And as they interbreed, all of the different alleles that exist in that population make up what we call the gene pool. If an allele vanishes or if an allele gains in its, its percentage, that means that we have a change in the gene pool. If organisms move from one area to another area, that can change what the gene pool is because that will also change the amounts of each allele. Any change in the gene pool means natural selection has occurred. And that means that it's not always going to be equal throughout. First, we would look at and say that natural selection is about organisms that outcompete other organisms. Some organisms are able to survive, some organisms are going to not survive because their traits are not favored. Their traits don't do well. That is the crux, that is a crucial bit of natural selection. Not every organism that exists is going to do well in its environment. And that is because of competition. So organisms are going to have to compete with each other. And sometimes an organism is going to outcompete another organism. As the natural world changes, some organisms that used to outcompete another organism or some traits that used to be favored might end up being disfavored. Some traits are going to make it so that some organisms are going to be able to compete or outcompete the other organisms around them. Those favored traits will be passed on to the next generation. Any trait that is not favored will not get passed on to the offspring because they will not survive long enough to pass their genes to the next generation. Speaking about competition, there are two main types of competition. The first is intraspecific competition. And intraspecific competition literally means it is competition within the same species. So a species of plant, for example, will compete for the exact same resources, will compete for sunlight, will compete for water, will compete for the different nutrients in the soil, all of those different aspects that that plant needs to survive, it will compete with its own species. Those that have the strongest traits that allow it to survive are going to do the best. So intraspecific competition is competition within a species. Interspecific competition, that is competition between different species. So if we're looking at plants, again, now we're just going to say different plants still are going to compete with each other for sunlight. They're still going to compete with each other for water. They're still going to compete with each other for nutrients. But the difference is that this is now not just within one species, but multiple species all competing for the same resources. This does not just stick with plants. This extends beyond the same type of organism. A rabbit or a deer that would be eating these plants, they are also competing with these plants. The plants obviously don't want to get eaten. The deer and the rabbit want to be the best at finding food to allow them to survive but not just to find food, also 
to be able to escape being food for another type of organism. That is interspecific competition. Competition between species, whether it's a predator-prey relationship, whether it's a relationship between uh, two other organisms that are actually trying to eat the same food. So in this case, the rabbit and the deer, both trying to eat the same food, or where you're looking at the different plants that are both just trying to compete for maybe sunlight, where a tree could outcompete, say, grass or a bush because it's taller and able to get that sunlight easier. But it also requires more sunlight and it requires more water and more nutrients. So there's a check and balance between all of this. And that is competition, which is going to cause some traits to be favored and other traits to be disfavored. Some traits which will increase in amounts and other traits which will start to decrease from the population. This competition leads us to understand that there are certain things that will cause natural selection to take place and for some traits to be favored over other traits. These are called selective pressures. And selective pressures are very basic and stuff that you and I would all understand. Food, the abundance of food is going to have a very strong impact on a population. If there's more food, then there is actually much less selective pressure because there's going to be less competition for that food. If food is scarce, that means that only the organisms that are able to get that food the best are going to survive. The rest are just going to starve. In the same way, when it comes down to health, if there happens to be some pestilence that's going around, if there's something that is either viral or bacterial or whatever it is that is killing organisms, the organisms that have the best immunity against that pathogen are going to succeed. They will then be able to pass on that trait to their offspring, and that's going to be very valuable for that population. Those that are susceptible to the pathogen will die out and not pass on their alleles. Predation. If an organism is unable to escape predators, it will also not do well. It will then not be able to pass on its alleles. If an organism is able to escape predation, that gives it a much better chance of being able to pass on its traits to the next generation. And hopefully, its offspring has the same trait of being able to escape predation, thus continuing the population for generation after generation after generation. Temperature, weather patterns, different temperatures. Obviously, some organisms do better at some temperatures than others. There are no lizards in the North Pole. There are no lizards in Antarctica. We don't have reptiles there but they do really well in a temperate area. They do really, really well in a tropical area. So obviously weather has a huge impact upon the dispersal of reptiles. It also matters when we're looking at the number of organisms or the types of organisms, organisms that we have in each of these locations. So the weather, the climate, that is going to have a very, very important impact on an organism. Plus, the weather and the climate is going to impact the amount of food that's available to those organisms because if there's not a good weather pattern for, to allow for plant life, well, then herbivores are probably not going to succeed in that area. You won't find a lot of grazers in an area that is unable to sustain plant life. Water, the most valuable resource that exists. Right? We all need water, and in th this case, water is going to determine what can live where. And lastly, mating. All of these organisms have a selective pressure to pass on their alleles. If they don't pass on their alleles to the next, to the next generation, then their alleles will disappear. So if they cannot find a mate, then that means that the next generation will not have those alleles and they will disappear from the population again. So finding a proper mate is going to be extremely important for these organisms. The different types of selection that can occur are either directional, stabilizing, or disruptive selection. And remember, 
all of the variation that we have within our population is due to mutations that have occurred over a long period of time based upon the fact that when our DNA is replicated, it doesn't get replicated perfectly. That is the foundation of bringing about and causing new alleles. So what happens in directional, disruptive, or stabilizing selection? It's really simple. In directional selection, one trait is favored, and it's typically what we would consider an extreme. So one type of trait is favored, and that means that the entire population sort of shifts toward that trait, okay? So the population will shift to having a specific trait that previously wasn't the most common trait amongst the population. So there is a directional shift. Stabilizing selection, it means that the average is favored. Whatever the majority of organisms in that population had, that's what is favored. That's what does really well. That's what succeeds and passes on its genes to the next generation. In disruptive selection, it's the exact opposite of stabilizing selection. The average does extremely poorly. The organisms that are average they are unable to pass on their alleles. And that means that the extremes or the not average alleles are favored and they do much better and thus the population will increase in those areas where the average will actually start to disappear. So in summary, populations are going to experience pressure. They have to, there's nothing around it. They're going to experience pressure in all these different ways. And it's going to come from within their own species and it's going to come from around other species, right? So both they're going to compete against their own species and they're going to compete against other species, whether it's for resources or to avoid being food or to be food, right? And selection is going to take place because of these different pressures, because of this competition that exists between organisms. You are going to have some type of selection that will occur. It will either be a directional selection where one extreme is favored over the other side. You're going to have stabilizing selection where the average is favored or disruptive selection where two extremes are favored and the average is unfavored. That's it for this time. Be awesome, stay awesome.